Hey, Jim, welcome to the show. Well, good afternoon, Seth. Thank you. It's good to be here. So I want to ask about this show, which yeah. is about your foray into cannabis farming. But I want to start by asking, how did you decide to become a cannabis farmer? Uh, totally by accident. I got this really sweet little property on the Rogue River in southern Oregon. And uh, the property behind me is an 80-acre farm. And it came up for sale. I bought it. And I was like, uh, now what? Uh, hey, alfalfa, corn, cattle. And it just so happened that the cannabis was legal in the state of Oregon just that year. And I went, well, got a couple of guys. Um, one Captain Jack, who used to be the weed dealer at SNL in the early 70s. That's he, great. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. really exciting because I do think you worry that with the legalization of cannabis that it might become a little corporate. And it's really nice to know that you're working with a guy named Captain Jack. That makes Captain really Jack. Well, there are no corporate guys in the field. They're all old-time growers, uh, old spiritual creatures, agriculturalists really natural, natural ingredients. Uh, the corporate guys kind of came in to see where the money is, but uh, and now, and now I I've become that, uh, one of them. Well, you look, I will say you do not, uh, uh, laying eyes on you, I am not in any way worried that you've gone corporate. You look very, <laughs> you look way more like a guy who'd be hanging out with Captain Jack than uh, uh, you yeah. see. Do yeah. you name, do you help name uh, the different strains, Jim? Well, I have one string. We have about six, seven strings. And one is Captain Jack's, of course. We call it the smell of SNL. Um, <laughs> because that's what he was known as back then, the smell of SNL. Because it was the hallways, you know, in the early <laughs> sure, sure. Uh I have one uh, called Cherry Pie that I really like, Seth, because it's a very low THC. It's like 18%. But it has like 3% terpenes, which is the flavor and the uh, the smell, and with a little bit of CBD, the three of them create what they call an entourage effect, which is just kind of this calming, there's no anxiety, there's no paranoia, you can still be chill and sweet. Actually, I named it because I would come downstairs at night and my wife would go, are you hungry? And I go, yeah, and she goes, let's go out to eat. I go, okay, what do you have a taste for, she say. And I went, well, I'm from Chicago, I wanted cheeseburgers, she goes, oh. Jim, it's a little heavy for me. Anything else? <laughs> well, I bought some sushi. Oh, I had sushi with my mom last night. Anything else? Well, how about if we go to the natural food bowl? Cilantro, cilantro, cilantro. They put cilantro in everything. What are you wasting my time for? You know we're going to eat where you want to eat and eat what you want to eat. <laughs> so now I take one little hit because I'm a microdoser. I only take one little bit. Yeah, I come downstairs and she says, are you hungry? Yeah, you want to go out to eat? Sure, where do you want to go? I go, baby, we can go to Taco Bell as long as you're sitting across from me. Oh, see, she's like, what a great advertisement. Aren't you being <laughs> charming, right? And so I call that strain the marriage counselor. Oh, the marriage counselor, that is, I that's what that I want. I call that Oregon, Seth, and it sold out in two months. I can't keep it up. <laughs> This Women very, are coming into dispensaries. They, they come into the sp dispensaries and say, you know, where's that marriage counselor? He needs some. And on the other end, I have a thing called Black Diamond, which the veterans really like because it helps with the PTSD and, and pain and sleep, and especially the PTSD. And one, one of my friends is paralyzed from the chest down, and he, his legs go into spasms. And this black diamond stops those spasms. And so there, it's really, there's a lot of municipal properties to this. And I call that one assisted living. That is, uh, we are obviously providing a service there. You're also a uh, real world uh, philanthropic, you know, I, I should say efforts. Can you talk a little bit about the Last Prisoner Project? Because I think this is a really great organization that's taking into account that what used to be illegal is now not, and yet there's still plenty of people serving jail time for marijuana. Except there's there's 40,000 prisoners that are serving jail time for nonviolent cannabis consumption or possession. There's a guy named Michael Thompson in Michigan. I hope the governor of Michigan is watching this. Please release him. 
He got sentenced to 40 to 60 years for having three pounds of cannabis. He's been in for 25 years. He is now, we wanted to get him out because we were scared for him to get COVID. He has COVID, he's in the hospital. And this should not be a death sentence for something that is legal, it's medicine, it's nonviolent. And there's thousands of prisoners and Steve D'Angelo and myself and a few other people are on the board and we're trying to get these people out of prison. And it's, it's always, it's always been communities of color subject to the disappropriateness of, of this kind of practices. And it's, so I'm part of that. Yeah. That's I, great I, that I, you're doing that. Uh, this is such a fun uh, show. It's really cool to see uh, you behind the scenes of, uh, of this farm and, and the travels you, uh, you make uh, to Columbia, among other places. And thanks oh, so yeah. much for making... Went to, went to Columbia for nine days with cameras and improvised the whole time. And it's, the, it's probably the middle part of our three episodes. It's on Discovery coming up on Wednesday the 19th. Uh, well, I can't wait. And thank you so much for making time for us, Jim. Always a pleasure to see you. You know, Seth, it's always a pleasure to see you, and thank you so much for your time.